didn't see you there. My name's Georgia from Grow My Goodness here in the beautiful Bay of Plenty, New Zealand. If you're interested in vegetables, flowers, small scale farming and market gardening, then follow me for my journey because we are just getting started. Let's go. In this video, we're going to talk about the overall layout and design of the farm. With no experience, we did a lot of research, we viewed other farms, we watched a lot of YouTube videos, and we even went on a market gardening course. Every farm is unique, and we had to come up with a layout that we feel was going to work best for us. In my first video, we talked about the size of the garden beds, which were all 14 meters long, 75 centimeters wide, or about 30 inches, and 30 centimeter paths, which are about 12 inches. To figure out the layout, we did a lot of walking around the property. We had to take into consideration things like the contour of the land, the trees and the shade, the position of the house and the shed, and how that was all going to work together with our lifestyle. We used Google Earth to figure out how much area we were going to use for our gardens and where that was going to work on the property. The one thing we kept coming back to through all of our research was keep it small, keep it small. Don't go too big too quickly. So we started with two garden plots, a total of 38 beds, just over an eighth of an acre. We broke our design into four main components. A place to propagate, a place to grow, a place to wash and pack, and a place to store. So let's go and take a look at where we are in our journey so far. One of the first things that we bought was this huge whiteboard. We got it from Facebook Marketplace for like $50. It's been major in the organization of our farm so far. We use it to write up to-do lists. We use it to write our shopping lists. And we have got the layout of the farm, what's planted, what's going to be planted next. This is our propagation area. We picked up these benches from Facebook Marketplace again, and they've been great, just giving us a nice big surface to work on here. We've got these seed trays. We started out with a couple of different sizes, um, and when we're ready to seed things up, we grab out whatever tray we need, bring it over here, we keep a bucket of our seeding mix up here to fill up the tray. And in here, we keep all of our seeds. So we just pull this out and grab whatever we need from here. Over here is where we store some of our soil seed raising mix and any other amendments that we are using on the bed. At the edge of the bench, we have got access to water here, which is great for when we are seeding up and we want to wet the seed raising mix or water the tray. And it also reaches nicely into our first glass house. Let's go and check out our glass houses. This was the first glass house that we built. It flows really nicely out from the propagation area. At about eight square meters, we thought it was going to be enough space, but we quickly ran out of room. So now we mostly just use this house for the flowers. Let's go and check out the second glass house that we built. It's not quite finished yet, 
we still need to figure out our bench space so we've just popped a couple of our planks of wood up off the floor to hold our ceiling trays for now we are currently watering everything by hand ideally we want to get a more professional watering system in here in the future that is our glass house layout let's go and check out the garden beds this house flows quite nicely out into the field but one of the first major issues that we have is this bank at the moment we climb up the bank or we go down to the end and come around we're thinking we need a retaining wall maybe some steps here because if you've got trays of seedlings in your hands it's less than ideal climbing up a bank into the field up here we have two garden plots one with 14 beds at 14 meters and the other 24 beds at the same length we started this one six months ago and we only just finished the final bed last month this garden has been a lot easier to build as we've had those tarps down for six months when establishing these first two beds we used the lasagna method so we pulled back the grass and the weeds we put down a layer of cardboard covered it with a layer of compost and planted our cover crop of buckwheat even with that buckwheat in there six months later the cardboard's still hanging around it's taken much longer than we anticipated to break down so we decided to ditch the cardboard for the next beds and see how that went and we've turned out pretty weed free doesn't mean we don't get any weeds but the overall result is we're pretty weed free it only takes around 15 20 minutes to rid this area of any weeds that pop up you'll also notice this black weed mat we've put around the outside of the bed this keeps our lawn from creeping into the garden beds and the great thing about it is the lawnmower just goes straight over it now before we go any further I have to show you this one thing so this is the first bed we planted and it's garlic it's just garlic from the shop really yeah we used Google to figure out the hypotenuse of the triangle maths is not really my strong point so dad had to help me with that one it didn't take us long to figure out there are a lot of things roaming ready to attack our vegetables we've got rabbits poo geckos, rats insects and slugs rather than trying to create a barrier to keep out all of the pests we've gone with individual covers over each of the beds the frame and wire cloche system from red path and the really fine insect netting that fits under the wire here I'll leave links in the description box below to the products and where we get them from let me show you how this works so the insect netting sits over top of the metal frame which is 80 centimeters to fit over our 75 centimeter bed and the wire just clicks into place at the bottom here holding the net in place one of the advantages of using this system is that it's really easy to access the bed the net just slides up the side and you can do all your work in the garden and then easily just slide it back down to cover it up again when you're done this system works really well with our tight pathways there's no stones and it keeps the paths clear at the moment we don't have any great irrigation set up we've just been using our sumi soaker sprinkler and the garden hose to run the water up from the shed we do have town supply running to the back of the property which will probably set up some better irrigation get some water running up directly to the garden beds this is garden plot number two we're hoping to have this finished within the next month let's go and take a look at the wash and pack area one of the most important considerations when designing the layout of the farm was how each area would flow together from the propagation area to the glass house to the field 
back down through to wash and pack. We haven't started creating our wash and pack area yet. We've just got plans so far. We're thinking this is going to be an outdoor wash space for our root vegetables and we'll have an inside area as well for washing and packing of our greens and salad mixes. We've got this great space here but there's not much to talk about yet as we don't have anything built. Currently anything that gets harvested from the field goes straight into the kitchen to be processed in there. The final consideration in our farm layout and design is storage and one of the critical components of storage is a cool room. We have been looking at Facebook Marketplace and Trade Me to try and find one second hand but it's not exactly something that we can just chuck on the back of the trailer, plug it in and set it up. So if anybody has any ideas on how to get a cool room set up easy and cheap, then drop me a comment below and I'll be sure to check it out. Another component of our storage is going to be tool storage. So let's go and have a look at what we've got. Having a dedicated space to store the tools is critical in the design of the farm. It needs to be easily accessible, organized close to where you want to use the tool and secure as you can see we've got some work to do here anyway that is all for this video if you like this video then like this video if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel so you can follow me on my journey now i've got some work to do i'll see you guys later we do about it that's it <laughs> get easier access yeah get the nah no one of the most ah uh, we've got this Got what it was. The cool room. <laughs> what is that next? I need to stop there. Okay, ready, keep it going. Oh, the final consideration of yeah. our farm. Nah, just follow my journey. <laughs>